Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. Welcome back to C++ for Complete Beginners. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about what you need to install on your computer to get started with C++ development. Unfortunately, I can't give you exact instructions uh, because um, exactly what you have to install depends on your platform, your operating system, your type of computer and um, it depends on your personal preferences for that matter um, what you prefer to use to develop C++ but um, I'm gonna give you some pointers uh, so I'm going to explain um, what I recommend you to install and uh, where to find it and, and here by the way you can see a little C++ program in Eclipse which is gonna look completely puzzling to you at the moment probably but we're going to look at that in the next tutorial. So, um, as I explained in the last video, we need an IDE and a compiler. So the first thing to do is to install your compiler. Now, if you're on Windows, you can use Visual C++ Express, which I believe is free, or Visual C++, the paid version, to follow this tutorial. But there are going to be some differences between what I show you and what you need to type in or do in Visual Studio but you probably can follow that tutorial with this also on Windows um, if you want a really simple solution to get started with you can use code blocks and I believe that can automatically download a compiler for you so Visual C++ comes with its own compiler and I believe, I think that CodeBlocks can also download a compiler for you. These are actually integrated development environments. So those are two possibilities, um, and there are others. But what I recommend you to do um, is, uh, firstly, install a compiler. And now if you're on, um, let's say, Mac or another Linux type operating system like Linux or Unix, then you need to search for the GNU C++ compiler and um, search for this for your system. Um, so I'm using a Mac, so I'd search for GNU C++ compiler for Mac and um, install that on your system. And you may already have it. Uh, so I'm not sure what the best link is here, but you'll find it if you look around. Mac OS X install GCC compiler. Yeah, the GNU compiler for C++ is also known as GCC and it's also known as G++. So you need to install um, G++ or GCC on your machine. And if you're using like a Linux type operating system, then you'll look for G++ or GCC or, you know, whatever. If you're using Windows, search for MinGW, MinGW, and that's um, minimalist GNU for Windows. So that's um, a GCC compiler for Windows. So if you're using Windows, I'd recommend that you install MinGW. So hopefully you can do that. You're going to have to search a little bit in Google to find exact instructions for your operating system, but the, this is the first challenge to install uh, GCC or MinGW if you're on Windows um, and then you've got a compiler on your system. The second thing that you need to do is you need to install an IDE and uh, again Visual C++ is an IDE which comes with a compiler, CodeBlocks is an IDE which comes with a compiler but I'd recommend that you use um, Eclipse so if you search for Eclipse C++, let's say, then you can find the Eclipse CDT. And, and that is um, a version of Eclipse uh, for C++. Eclipse is a kind of generic development environment. Um, and the specific version of Eclipse for C++ is called Eclipse CDT. So this is the second thing you need to install. So just download and install that. You might have to do some configuration after this to link, to, well, to tell Eclipse where your compiler is. And if you do, if you do need, need to, um, you'll find that out certainly in the next tutorial because it won't work. 
and um, you'll need to just Google for instructions for your system on how to tell Eclipse CDT where to find your compiler. So this is going to be a little bit challenging. You're going to have to probably do a little bit of Googling, perhaps some configuration, depending on your system. Um, you might have to, uh, but um, it's worth persisting with. And believe me, I, well, I've always thought anyway that getting your C first C++ program running, the first minimal Hello World C++ program, you know, installing everything and getting the code in there and getting to that point is the most difficult thing about C++. So um, give this some time and be patient. Try to install a compiler, GNU or MinGW if it's Windows, and then install an IDE, and I recommend CDT, which will work on Windows or pretty much any system. If you've already got Eclipse installed, um, what you can do is you can go to uh, the marketplace. If you go to help Eclipse marketplace, whoops, that's the wrong one. Let's cancel that. Help Eclipse marketplace and just search for CDT in here. You should be able to install it here. Uh, just type CDT in that box and just search for it. CDT. I've already got it installed, so I don't know if this will actually find anything but um, you can install it into an existing Eclipse like that. And you can also, another way of doing that, if you've already got Eclipse, is just go to this Eclipse CDT site, type Eclipse CDT into Google, go to download, and then you can just put this URL here uh, into Eclipse. So if you go to, um, let's say, let's get rid of that. wizard cannot be closed. Okay, that's nice. Um, but if you go to, um, ah, that's really annoying. If you go to the Eclipse, I think it's the help or Windows menu, there's a option in that menu for installing software updates. And you can just put this URL into um, a box if you select that menu option and you can install CDT there. That's an alternative to using the marketplace but it's easier to use the marketplace and easier still just to download the, the CDT um, as a kind of standalone package here. Um, so when, once you've done that, um, then you'll have everything you need to get started with developing C++ programs. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at creating a really simple Hello World C++ program. So um, if you install everything and you think it's working, move on to the next video and that's where you'll find out if it really is working or not. So until next time, happy coding.